This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, one mayoral contender slaps another with a defamation suit. And a local academic says it could go either way. The fight to remove cage eggs from supermarket shelves is taken directly to one central city store. And the classic tale of Jack Frost is about to be told on ice after months of preparation. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. A defamation expert is weighing in on the legal case being waged against Mayor Dave Cull. The Mayor was yesterday served with legal papers in relation to an incident between himself and Councillor Lee Vandevers late last year. And it's a case a local academic believes could go either way. Reviewing the fracker. University of Otago defamation expert Marcelo Rodriguez Ferreira believes the word liar should not be thrown lightly. He's read up on the case and watched the footage of a bust-up at a Dunedin City Council meeting last December where Councillor Lee Vandevis was asked to leave by Mayor Dave Cull. Uh, calling someone a liar is a pretty classic case of defamation insofar as it's got the capacity to reduce someone's reputation in the eyes of society or others or the reasonable person. Uh, and so if Mr Cull, um, Mayor Cull rather, did call uh, Mr Vandevis a liar, then that would have the capacity to be defamatory. Although he says the Mayor has many defensive avenues open to him should the case go to court, including the truth or honest opinion. Absolutely. If he, uh, Mayor Cull is basing his uh, honest opinion on, on, on true facts, if his uh, view is an honestly held one, then the defence of honest opinion would also be uh, available to him. While admitting he says he's not a political analyst, Rodriguez Ferreira believes there may be some political motivation to the timing of the papers being served. The incident occurred nearly eight months ago, but the papers were only served just now as the local body election process begins. But obviously this uh, is more of a distraction than anything from local body campaigns. It increases Councillor Vandevis's, uh, I guess, his, his standing in the, in the media. It, it's probably not particularly good for the mayor, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the claim is invalid. That doesn't necessarily mean that the claim is invalid either. Um, they've both got a right to bring these proceedings and defend the proceedings respectively. He says if it goes to trial, it would more than likely be at the High Court and could be more than a year away as the judicial system does not move quickly. But actually uh, defamation is one of the few situations in which uh, a, a jury might be called or a finder of fact could be other than a judge and that really does limit the ability for uh, legal counsel to influence the outcome. He says there are many ways in which the matter could be settled before it goes to trial. Daryl Bazer, 39 Dunedin News. A vegetation fire at Burnside that began yesterday is still smouldering. The New Zealand Fire Service Assistant Area Commander Roger Smith says four crews were involved with getting water to the fire. He says it's a deep-rooted vegetation fire on a commercial property that recycles green waste. Smith says the owner has agreed to put a clay cap over the site if overnight flooding of the fire doesn't work. A small group of Dunedin animal rights activists have taken part in a nationwide protest at a local supermarket. The Save Animals from Exploitation group is calling on countdown supermarkets in New Zealand to stop selling cage eggs. And they say there's no excuse, as it's already being done in Australia. Ruffling some feathers. A nationwide campaign has been launched by Save Animals from Exploitation asking for the countdown chain of supermarkets to stop stocking eggs that come from caged chickens. These four local protesters were handing out pamphlets in front of the countdown Dunedin before a member of staff asked them to leave. But organiser Kelly Lamere believes they got their message across. Um, it, it went really well. Um, we weren't there for as long as, as I'd hoped, but um, longer than I thought we might be. So, yeah, pretty good. While the protest only lasted around 20 minutes, Le Maire says the store's management staff were polite in asking the group to leave. Um, the, 
the management were pretty all right, in my opinion. Um, they came out and just um, said that, some, that somebody had given them a pamphlet, one of these, and uh, were not happy about it, so they were asking us to politely leave as it was private property, which we did. Among the four gathered was one first-time protester, university surveying student Kelsey Poglaze. She says she felt it was time to stand up and have her opinion counted. It was pretty cool to be a part of something, something that I believe quite strongly in, and to have my voice heard and be a part of the bigger picture. Safe says there will be more pressure put on the supermarket chain in coming weeks, especially with the organisation's parent company in Australia recently banning cage eggs. Countdown New Zealand spokesperson James Walker says there are significant availability issues, with only 15% of eggs produced in New Zealand being free range. He says Woolworths in Australia has suffered significant egg shortages since going fully free range. Daryl Baser, 39, Dunedin News. An internationally renowned biological anthropologist has received the University of Otago's highest research honour. Professor Lisa Matisu Smith is this year's recipient of the Distinguished Research Medal, awarded for outstanding scholarly achievement. Despite having published three books and countless papers, she says she's shocked yet thrilled to receive the honour. Matisu Smith says she feels a bit awkward being singled out as an individual researcher, with a lot of her work being undertaken in collaboration with others. She will officially receive the prestigious award at a public lecture she's set to deliver later this year. Months of practice are being put on show at a local stadium for a school holiday production on ice. Dozens of young skaters are taking part in the Dunedin Ice Skating Club's version of Jack Frost. And the Chili Show is helping close out the holidays with cheer. Preparing to take to an unconventional stage, these young skaters are taking part in a local production of Jack Frost at the Dunedin Ice Stadium. It's been a few months in the planning and the actors say they're keen to show what they've been working on in front of a sizeable crowd. We've been working on this for the last term, so between term two and the beginning of this holidays. It's the second time the Dunedin Ice Skating Club has staged a mid-year show to tie in with the city's Cadbury Chocolate Carnival. Director Grant Howie has been involved both years, but this time around he's very much behind the scenes. Last year was the first time we did our Cinderella show and that was the first time that I began to fully direct in the show, so I skate in it. This time I'm not skating, I'm just helping to direct. He's happy with how the production has come together with an array of costumes and lighting on display alongside the impressive skating. One of the challenges has been getting enough time on the ice to practice, with a lot of local groups all requiring the rink. But one of the skaters says it's balancing the acting component with skating that's been the most challenging aspect. I'm definitely not the best at it, but you kind of get the hang of it after a while. The money raised from the two performances will go back into the running of the local ice skating club, all while providing a cherry, albeit chilly way, to end the school holidays. Ruby McAndrew, 39, Dunedin News. Well, still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we take a look at what's on offer in an upcoming Filipino cultural event, and we have highlights from the annual Jaffa race. Hi kids, if you'd like to enter our competition and win a trip for you and two friends from home to school in a fire truck, see the competition details below. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. have the experience and the expertise to supply a wide range of high quality New Zealand made products and can manufacture customised products to meet your individual requirements. Wooltech, great people, great products, great service. Come one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. 
Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear and witness the address of the Haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 4761616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. Thinking of services for older people, think Enliven. Enliven is a service philosophy where people come first. Enliven is about choice, activity, relationships, respect and security. You can enliven your health, your friendships, your life, no matter what your age. For more information, go to psitago.org.nz or call 4777-115. can make a difference for the SPCA this Cupcake Day. It's the sweetest way to help animals in need. For more details, go to sbcacupcakeday.co.nz. Mobility Solutions Centre Dunedin provides products to improve your independence, comfort and safety. Contact the team at 4777-195 or visit mobilitysolutionscentre.co.nz. And mums and dads, we've got a great competition for you too. You can win a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket for your home. Just see the details below. Welcome back. Staff turnover in New Zealand is on the rise, with more workers willing to change jobs. The latest Hayes Salary Guide showed voluntary staff turnover had risen in almost a quarter of the 419 organisations surveyed. The increasing number of resignations is being put down to factors such as an ageing workforce, reduced loyalty and rapid organisational change. The results affirm what was shown in the annual New Zealand staff turnover survey from earlier this year. It showed that the national average turnover for 2015 was 18.4%, the highest rate since 2008. And on that note, let's take a look at today's markets. The NZX50 has closed the day up 12 points, it's now at 7,226. The Dow Jones is down 78 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is down slightly against the yen, but we are up against the other currencies that we follow. Members of the Otago Filipino Student Association are busily preparing for their first ever cultural night. The student group wants to share their culture with the wider Dunedin community and club president King Feliciano joins us now to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening. Now how long has this your association been around? Yes, so the Otago Filipino Student Association or OFSA as, um, it was established in 2012 by a small group of friends, mm -hmm. but it wasn't until 2014 when the club became um, affiliated with OUSA and the University of Otago. So we're a pretty young club. Mm. Why was it established? Yes, so um, the people who first established OFSA um, recognized the difficulty in moving away from home for the first time. So they created the club as a way to um, make it a little bit easier to settle in the Nathan for Filipino students and just students in general. Mm. How large is the Filipino population locally? Um, so um, there is a large Filipino community that's been helping us um, the cult with the cultural night. So um, the props and the majority of our props and the costumes we got from them. Um, and they've been helping us with selling tickets and promotion as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the number of Filipinos in the Nathan is growing every year. And it's always great to see like familiar fa faces around town. Yep. Yeah. What is the cultural night all about? Yes, yeah, so um, the play is going to be um, a, an adaptation of the Disney movie Mulan. But instead of Mulan as the main character, it's going to be called Maria. So Maria is a Filipina teenager who's fighting for her country in the, Spanish, uh, in the Philippine Revolution against the Spaniards. Mm -hmm. 
and the um, narrative is going to include historical background about the Philippines, as well as um, some fiction, drama, comedy, and romance as well. Wow. Now, are you you're taking donations on the door, or, or is there a cost of going in? Yes, um, so it's $10 per ticket or $12 door sale. Mm -hmm. You can get um, tickets at Manila Grill, and we'll have um, stalls set up around campus as well. And you can check our Facebook page for updates about that. Mm. And what will you be using the profits for? Yes, so, um, the profits will be donated to the New Zealand Red Cross Syrian Refugee Program. And so the Red Cross has been helping, um, will be, has been the support of the Syrian families um, in their resettlement in Dunedin, mm -hmm. um, like helping them get, find work and just connecting with the wider Dunedin community. And we want to do our bit by um, donating whatever we raise to their cause. Very nice. Does the association get involved in other events throughout the year? Yes, so um, every year we c um, participate in the food festival. We just had one last, last week. So we cook like barbecue, like Filipino cuisines. And um, before, a day before the cultural night, we will have an international carnival. So we'll have a, like a sneak peek of the performances. And yeah, a bingo event as well is pretty big last year. So we'll think of doing that. But we'll have a meeting after the cultural night to set up the date for that. What's your favorite part of the Filipino culture? Yeah, so I think it's probably that because we're naturally like happy people, yeah. the audience will see that we have dances and festivals celebrating pretty much anything. Yeah, so um, we're, we're hoping to share that to the, the Nadine community um, in this culture net and other culture nets to follow. Wonderful. Good luck with the cultural hey, night. Thank you so much. Uh, Otago Filipino Student Association Club President King Feliciano, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, Baldwin Street turns into a sea of Jaffas and not the Auckland type. We'll take a look at the results of our online poll. Help delay the signs of ageing with Collagen Plus from Silverhorn. Collagen Plus helps supplement your body's own natural production of collagen, giving you firmer, healthier, younger looking skin, shinier, healthier hair and stronger nails. It's restoring your beauty from within. And it's great value. Three month supply, that's 180 capsules, is just $98. We'll pay the courier charge to you and we'll give you a luxurious face cream as well. Beauty from the inside and the outside. Give us a call today, 0800 502 402. We're a 25 Moreau place. And Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. You can bake a difference for the SPCA this cupcake day. It's the sweetest way to help animals in need. For more details, go to spcacupcakeday.co.nz. Come one, come all to the Lana Castle Winter Ball. Traditional dancing, dining and fun to be had. Dress up in your Victorian costume and experience the glamour of yesteryear. And witness the address of the haggis. Friday 22nd of July, get in fast as tickets are limited. Call 47616616 or go online to www.lanarkcastle.co.nz. Driving Miss Daisy is a safe, friendly and reliable companion driving Hello, service. Hello Jean, where are we off to today? We form genuine friendships with our clients and help them to remain independent. Thousands of Driving Miss Daisy clients and their families love our caring, affordable service. Call us today for a quote on 0800 948 432 or visit drivingmissdaisy.co.nz Driving Miss Daisy for the gift of independence.
season, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Mobility Solutions Centre Dunedin provides products to improve your independence, comfort and safety. Contact the team at 4777-195 or visit mobilitysolutionscentre.co.nz Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Hey mums and dads, we've got a great competition for you too. You can win a fire extinguisher and a fire blanket for your home. Just see the details below. Welcome back. One of the city's most unique events has generated tens of thousands of dollars for charity. The annual Jaffa race saw around 75,000 of the bright chocolates hurtling down Baldwin Street. And this year, three charities will benefit from the colourful candy cascade. The cameras rolled and so did the Jaffas. Hordes of Dunedin residents have turned out once again to see the annual Cadbury Chocolate Carnival Jaffa race. Kids and adults of all ages line the barricaded edges of the world's steepest street, all to see the brightly coloured spheres bounce to the finish line. The races came in waves of red, yellow and green, each representing a different charity. Almost $75,000 was raised for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Surf Life Saving and the Parent Centre New Zealand. The other big winners on the day were those whose Jaffas came in first in each of the three races for a prize worth $2,000. Jack Conroy, 39, Dunedin News. A local academic says residents need to use te reo Māori more frequently. The call comes as the University of Otago's Māori Language Week winds down for another year. This week's 39 Dunedin News online poll asked if you use te reo uh, words and phrases often. 42% of you do, but 52% of you do not. The Dunedin City Council is set to have some fresh blood in its midst, with five current councillors confirming they won't seek re-election. Many of those not standing have cited the lar large workload and increasing bureaucracy as a job deterrent. Next week's 39 Dunedin News online poll asks, asks if you care about the upcoming local body election. You can find it at our website dunedintv.co.nz. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. A legal academic believes the defamation case against Dunedin Mayor Dave Cull may have legs but says it will likely be settled out of court. A small but enthusiastic group of protesters have gathered outside Countdown to urge the supermarket chain to stop selling cage eggs. And the local ice skating club is staging a wintry themed show for kids at the Dunedin Ice Stadium to help raise money for the club. Make it look so easy. Well, let's find out now what's going to be in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. And Phil Somerville joins us. Good evening. Yes, hi, Rebecca. A small sample from the, the news columns. A Dunedin lawyer has been struck off, so we report on that. Uh, Eileen Goodwin, the health reporter, uh, has written about neurosurgery and how it uh, some assurances guarded from the health minister how it might fit into a hospital rebuild and the editorials on that subject, on the perils of the rebuild and how that might, uh, we've got to be wary as it might shape our services for the future. Uh, the mix, of course, tomorrow, a new column, Slice of Life, by a, a dietitian, a very experienced one, who's consulted with the Highlanders and the Manly Sea Eagles Rugby League. Her first column's about the humble cup of tea and the benefits in that, so that's nice. The main mix story is, are, we being, are you being ripped off? That's uh, consumer affairs and that sort of stuff. And I'd like to mention, because they don't normally get mentioned, Jerry O'Brien's parallax uh, pictures in the mix each week. They're often really quite clever and quite artistic. And that is in tomorrow's ODT, along with a whole lot of other bits and pieces. Thanks, Phil. Time now for Local Weather.
This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. And here is today's city view. It's taken of a watering hole in Kaigarai Valley. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 13 degrees for the central city, 12 at the gardens, 17 out on the tiling. To the situation in today's westerly flow will tend north-westerly this weekend, but it doesn't mean good things. Around to some of the main towns on the lower South Island for tomorrow, gale force northwesters with rain for Invercargill, Gore and Tiano. Just strong northwesters for Alexander with rain there, 12 degrees. Gusty northwesters with rain for Queenstown and Wanaka, not quite so strong for Omaru and Twizel. Now those northwesters, but rain as well, and highs of around 11 or 12 degrees. In Dunedin tonight, cloudy with rain developing before dawn and nor'westers, possibly near gale force. Tonight's low 7 degrees. Tomorrow, rain clearing in the afternoon with strong gusty westerlies and a high of 12. And on Sunday, showers with strong southwesters and a high of 10. And there really is no allowance for putting your washing out on the line with that forecast. Sorry about that. Uh, to the Otago Pallet Fires, tidal and fishing information. Low tide tomorrow evening is at 25 past 6. High tide on Sunday evening is at a quarter past seven. And fishing conditions are only looking decent tomorrow at around 20 past three in the afternoon. And that's all from the team here at 39 Dunedin News for this week. We will leave you now to some shots from the week that was and we'll see you again on Monday. Good night. <laughs>